Hello, welcome to Soccer Yanks, a Soccer News Day podcast. I'm your co-host, Dave. And I am Dan, and we are here to bring you the beautiful game from the American perspective. And what a perspective we have for you in store today. It has been the most electrifying three weeks of football that I can remember in my entire life, I think. It's probably been the best three weeks of soccer I've seen. Groups, uh, the round of 16, we are now entering the quarterfinal round. The the Love Royale with cheese round. (laughs) The last, the last eight. The final eight are here. Um, It's just, I mean, this World Cup does not leave you without something. Every single match. I I mean, okay. Okay, there's been a couple of, uh, there's been a couple of halves here and there that have not been the best. um, Or, let me change that. Maybe have not been the most entertaining for the neutral or for someone that's new to the game that wants to just kind of see some goals or see some drama. But, the round of 16 has been incredible. It's been incredible. Yeah, I can't, I can't complain. The, all the bigs have been pushed to their limit. Yeah. Uh, and the... Um, I, there hasn't been one... Well... There really has been only one kind of halfway standout. And we'll talk about that later. But every every game has been neck and neck. For the most part. What well, you want to you wanna talk about... Quarterfinals, and then we kind of uh, recap how uh, each team got to where they're at. Want to do that? Yeah, sure. Let's, Let's go. We're going loosey goosey today, guys. Yeah, it's we're, summertime. We're winging it. We're laid back. We, we take off the tie, put the feet up. I got my loafers on. Surf or die, man. <laughs> okay. Um, this Friday, we have in the opening match of the quarterfinals, I believe, at noon Eastern time, Germany versus Le France. Yeah, blues. The blues, the the roosters. Europe, the two two I guess the traditional European powerhouses. I mean, classic match. Classic. It's a classic. I, don't, I It's hard to say that France is a powerhouse. They have one World Cup. Blue versus. They white. They do have a good football tradition. Uh, the Germans obviously have an outstanding football tradition. I think they've made. I don't know how many semifinals in a row. <laughs> so it was. They're usually there. They're there. They're always in contention. And Italy's not here this time, so it's, it looks even better for them. In the sense of what? Europe, just, oh. The progress. Um, Usually they always, like, slick in there somehow. You know, some let, way. Let's talk about the French. What, what do you think about the French? They have chips on their shoulders. They're something to prove. Like, they're not the team of old. The, they're not the defectors of South Africa. Uh, I definitely... Did not see this coming from France. I, I was de- I was a detractor. I, I believed that they would implode again. There would be some sort of issue. I thought when Ribéry wasn't playing, there was... No, Evra was included, a mutineer. And Ribéry was not included. Probably content, you know, a contender for player of the year. I'm like, this is just going in the wrong direction. And then Nasri was told to go pound sand. Yes. Uh, and then his girlfriend got really upset and sued the French Football Association or something like that. To each their own. <laughs> um, yeah, no. This uh, I thought at best they would be plucky, but they uh, they have uh, commanded almost every well every game they've played so far. Now, okay, so let's. Uh, they beat Nigeria two zero. Now Nigeria had them going. Nigeria had them going, pushing them, pushing them, pushing them, and then there was a injury, I believe. In the defense, um, no, it was a midfielder. I, um, his last name starts with an O. Onazi, I think it was named. Uh, injured, all of a sudden, that's when the French made a breakthroughs. Also, kind of also coincided with Griezmann coming onto the field. He played fantastic. He did play fantastic. I, I'm going to make a statement that mm, maybe sounds a little biased, but I think the French have had a pretty easy path to where they're at. Uh, Nigeria was the was the I think the toughest, I mean, people are going to say Switzerland, but they pounded the crap out of Switzerland. Switzerland woke up after, after playing France, Nigeria had a chance and and they kind of blew it. I'm nothing to take away from Valbuena and Debushi. Goodbye. These guys are playing outstanding. Benzema, they're they're all playing very good, but are they really being pushed? You know, because 
I have a feeling that the winner of this World Cup is going to be like at the end they're going to be so tormented from what they with the ringer that they went through to get there because there's no one is getting out of this unscathed and I think the French have, maybe maybe that's an advantage I guess everyone else has been beaten up really bad and the French haven't maybe that's they have the most stamina I just don't know mentally wise if that's okay yeah physically they have the most stamina but do they have that grit like are they going to be able to go you know the Germans say whatever you want to say about their uh, their performances maybe have not been the best or most beautiful but they've been getting pushed to the wire and they've been figuring out a way to win that's that means something that's that's important that's valuable and I don't know if the French have that yeah they like you said they were I guess we can call them the group of life <laughs> <laughs> So, I, I, like I said, they had a bit of a benefit. And, yeah, maybe this is their test. And that's what ultimately makes world champion, if they can rise rise to the occasion. If this, if the flu-like symptoms are just rumors, are they mind games? Oh, from the Germans. Could but it just be... Seven, seven players? Uh... Yeah, and it's not, they're not just... Everyone uh, disregard the thunder and the lightning in the background. That's, yeah, and the clicks. That's nothing. Yeah, that's nothing. It's just the apocalypse. If I happen to fall down, zapped, yeah. just keep going without me. Um, yeah, no, it's... Um, no, all right, so they got seven players new, Seven players with the flu, right? Lam, flu, flu-like, flu-like symptoms. It's just Neuer, Lam, Hummel, Schweinsteiger, Müller, Klose, and Jeremy. You know, no one too crucial. You know what they got, right? They all picked <laughs> up the clap. <laughs> they called that clap. They all picked up the clap somewhere. Yeah. That's it. They were in um, the jungle, some sort of a... They ch- they shared some ladies. <laughs> some Manaus love. Ladies of the night. Uh, uh, Germany versus France. It's going to be a classic. I think all these... all these Quarterfinals? Well, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be another 2-1 I think game. the I think... Uh, Germany 2-1. Two, I think the Germans are going to beat them. I think... Um, the one thing that the Germans have proven is that they can keep a pace, a tremendous pace, all match, and we'll see. We're gonna we'll, we'll see what the French if the French can hold up to that. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what: if there is if there are if there is a team that has some creative players that can unlock the Germans or take advantage of the slow German defense, yes, absolutely. The French have them. Touch Valbuena, Kabai. Benzema, Giroud's been a ghost. I don't think I, I think Griezmann's got <laughs> has got to be in there, but those guys they can make something happen. Especially Veron, has been unbelievable too at defense. Yeah, did he go out injured? I thought I saw him. I don't know if it was precautionary or not. I don't. I, that match was uh, in and out. I was in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, but Veron has been has been good all tournament wide. Now, I'm not. Ha- I don't think the Germans. I don't think the German approach to their defense has been... Actually, you know what? Germany improved significantly when Lahm went to right back. He should be a right back. He plays his center back in Munich because they play three at the back in Munich. Well, the center defensive mid, you mean? He plays a midfielder. Yeah, holding midfielder, or a drawn midfielder. Um, But when he... There was an injury. I forget the injury that occurred. Schweinsteiger. It was a Schweinsteiger? Yeah, he was out. And then Kroos, Kroos... Played more forward last year. He played in Schweinsteiger's position, but Lom at Munich in the Pep system played better. So Lowe has kind of been forcing him in that position too. But in this system, on this German team, it should be four at the back. And it, well, it is four. It's four, and it's four big, big guys. I mean, they're doing four center backs. So that's why when I saw Lom come, when he had to shift back and play his his right back position. It was more of a clap. I don't know if it's classic. It was like I, don't know what's cla- I don't know what's classic any- anymore. An overlapping, an over- Full overlapping back. fullback. Yeah. He dominated that whole right wing. That's where he was comfortable. That's where he looked the most comfortable. That's where he looked the Supply. most dominant. Yes. They need that. And I think if they keep putting Houds and Boateng out wide, or, or uh, well, I guess Hummels would have made a better, Hummels would have done better. I believe, uh, what's his face, Mustafi is also is now hurt. I think it may have been his tournament now. So... Uh, so there's some issues. There's some issues there with Germany, and I, the slow black, the excuse me, the slow back line <laughs> um, can be exposed. I think it can be exposed, and I think the, we'll see how the French come out if they can do it. My, the weight to me still is on the German side. The Germans are probably still better, still can do it. Ozil, Ozil, and Kroos have to have to. 
they need to put Ozil in the middle of the park. I also, guess, yeah, I guess materialize is the word I'm I'm looking for. Like they have been non-existent. I wouldn't say non-existent. Uh, Ozil, the, if the you space look at, that he creates, yes, but his touches have been too heavy. His passes have been too far. He hasn't had it, but he does create space and make space for other players. I think if you look at how if you look at him compared to the other Germans, he still stands out. He's still above the fray. Attacking. Yes, absolutely. Um, we'll see. I just I think he would. I think the Germans would would be much better suited with having Ozil in the middle. Uh, and I know that Cruz can't play out wide. I understand that. I understand you get some logistic issues, but if they could figure out somebody to play out wide and put him in the middle, I think they would be better suited, especially playing a, next to Kadira. Or yeah, or just like a, a more smooth rotation. Like he could come inside. He could, they could both play inside and outside. Cruz doesn't have to play outside and stay outside. He could go outside and move in up the box as they're moving forward. Cross it in. He's got a thumper for a right foot. He can cross it and pl- supply service. He doesn't have to just linger. But I'm not the coach. None of us are. But that's the we, first game tomorrow. I can't wait. I am firing up my smoker, and I will be barbecuing and probably going to overcook some things because I'm going to be sitting in front of the TV for 45 minutes straight twice. And then at 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock. this is highlighted for me as probably the most razzle-dazzle potential game of my adult life I'm going to witness live. I don't know about you. Between Colombia and Brazil. Uh, uh, Colombia, for me, has definitely been the standout team. As far as style, style-wise, flute, tick tac kind of stuff. You know, Colombia versus Uruguay was a, was a great example of... Uruguay did everything right. They were very... They were, they were tactically set up correctly. They were tight in the back. They were... They were Keeping the Colombians in check, but you know, as uh, as Jay wrote in his uh, "Winners and Losers" column uh, today, good players be, can beat good tactics, and you know that midfield of Cuadrado and and James Rodriguez have been surprising people left and right, and they were able to get those two. They were able to get those two goals. One of them, first of all, that the screamer from uh, James Rodriguez was that was incredible. A lot of people are saying that's the goal of the tournament. I mean, we'll, we'll see. He has a couple. Yeah, he has a couple. Yeah, he, has a couple of, he has a couple in contention. Yeah, to chip, I, I I still personally think Timmy Cahill's is the most difficult one to to pull off on the volley. The volley, and it was against the Dutch, so bonus yeah. points. Um, but he, you know, that's the, that's the big focus is on James Rodriguez. I you can't. The Colombians have been playing the cleanest, tightest football of the tournament. I don't think you could take that away from them. They've been playing great, great football. I don't think they've played the best competition. And I, you know, I okay, you know, who has played good competition? Well, the Germans have played good competition. The Dutch have played good competition. The Brazilians have played good. You know what I mean? The teams that look like, oh, crap, they kind of faltered a little bit. They played good competition. The Colombians have really, this is going to be their first test. Um, and, you know, the I. Uruguay team minus Suarez, though. No, Uruguay minus Suarez hasn't proved. Without Suarez, they weren't able, un- unable able to do anything. The they had game. nothing going forward. Forlan had nothing in the tank going forward. No ideas, no creativity. Nobody connected with Cavani. They were just a defensive unit. They were just, let's not lose. Yeah, but wasn't that the first game without him against Colombia? No, the first game without him was against Costa Rica when they got slammed. The very first game, he sat, and then they got slammed. And then he came back, beat England. Because Italy was the second group. Beat England 2-0, then beat the Italians uh, 2-1, was it? 1-0? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, that's the bite the bite gate. But they beat him. They ended up beating him. <laughs> they still can't do it anyway. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think, I, I, I mean, the Colum- so like you're going to see the team, the, you know, front runner. Your front runner team. <laughs> Every still, time I think about it, it's that, the bite. Yeah, I'm still on the bite. Still on the bite. Every time I think of the bite, I'm so over the bite. I can't. Uh, I don't even want to talk about the bite anymore. I fell on him, <laughs> and then one day later, no, I bit him because Barcelona said to say I'm sorry. Um, okay, uh, get this a deal. Uh, you know, Brazil, near and dear to my heart, Brazil. Do I think? Uh, I think they have a problem. I think they have a problem psychologically. Uh, I don't, you know, I I said this about Ivory Coast before the World Cup. 
I said that their manager was basically telling them, like, all right, you guys are a collection of talent. Go out there and have fun, boys. And it doesn't work. That doesn't work. You, they have to have a system. It, and, and I'm not saying that Brazil doesn't have a system. But I feel like the players, you know, you watched Hulk. A lot of people gave Hulk a lot of praise uh, in the second half against against uh, Chile. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did do some great things, and he did try, and he gave a lot of effort. But there was a lot of times where he took the game upon himself, where he tried to break two guys, where the, the smart thing to do, the better thing to do, was to pass the ball off and go on a run and try to get it on the give and go. But he no, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass. Uh, you know, same thing. Neymar's doing the same thing. They're, they're taking all this trying to make their name. They want to be the next. Uh, uh, but I don't Socrates. Or I don't think Zico it's about or... making the name. No. No, I think it's like it's the the impetus that we need to win this game. I can do it. I don't think it's about the glory. I really do think it's about winning, and it's it's the mentality that they're all good enough to make it happen. When they you just see, don't trust the next guy. It's, I don't know if it's not trust the next guy. Well, Neymar doesn't not even trusting his left foot anymore. There were so many chances he should have just shot with his left foot, which I've seen him do a thousand times, and he's taken that extra touch to bring it back to his right. There's, there, there is maybe – there's a trust of – nobody wants to blow a chance, it seems like. So keep it at my feet. I trust myself more than anybody else. Keep it at my feet. I mean there are some players that are not – like Gustavo is not playing like that. And, of course, we're going to miss him this match because he's accumulated yellows. Oscar, although he was very quiet offensively, was, was all over the map defensively. He also has been had no problem distributing the ball. Um, Fernandinho was he didn't have a great game against Chile. They 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 had his number, but when he came in off the bench against against Cameroon, it was like, I mean it's Cameroon. I understand there's a lot of issues with Cameroon, but he was definitely distributing the ball and moving the ball well. So there's there are guys that are don't have that issue, but the key men, your your Hulk and your Neymar's. Um, it seems like, you know, the David Luiz, Marcelo, they all seem to hold the ball too long. You know, I think, do I think that they still have enough to, to do the whole thing? Yes, absolutely. I think when I look at them, they have it in them. Can they overcome this, this the tremendous pressure? I mean, you saw them when they won the penalty shootout against Chile. Like, half of them, like, were, like, dead. They were just dead emotionally. They were crying. They, were, they couldn't take it. There was just... There's so much pressure on these guys to win. The There's so much pressure on these guys to win. And everything they do is wrong. They're, everything they do is wrong in the media, in the people's eyes. It's not good enough. That's the thing. They're, they're not in Russia. They're not in Portugal. They're not in Spain. Even though they speak those languages, they can still tune it out. Hear their home. Yeah, they hear the crowd. They hear everything. They, they see all the newspapers, the TVs. They look out their window wherever they're staying. The bellhops, the concierge, wherever they go out to dinner. They hear everything. They know everything that's being said. If, and even if nobody's saying anything, they know what they're thinking. They know what they're thinking. Um, so I that's, think that's an immense pressure. I think I think the mental game, I think the mental game is much worse for them than the actual game game, uh, because when they do have those moments of brilliance, it looks it does it starts to look good. It starts to looks amazing again. Um, I'm just sick of hearing though that, you know, they should have lost to Chile. They were not. They're not good. I mean. When I hear people that don't watch football tell me that Brazil should have wiped the floor with Chile, you haven't been watching. That was Nobody was going to wipe the floor with Chile. It was toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Nobody. Was Nobody in this games. tournament. There's not one team in this tournament that was going to just push Chile aside. Those guys were going down with no, a fight. They definitely... They... <sighs> and if you, if you think about it, okay, so people say Luis's goal... Luis's goal was an own goal. Fine. Brazil didn't even score their own goal. But Sanchez's goal was gifted to him from an, on a Hulk mistake. And a Hulk, me personally, should be benched because he's not been good enough. Well, that's why I think he took that ball. Because he, was, he, had, that, uh, he had that in his head, like, i got to make up for that. Because right. that was after that. That was in, like, the 60th minute, right? What, his... Uh, Taking it by himself. He was, on the left, oh, he was on the right side, and he cut across, yes. and he tried to... Tried to and he I blasted one, yes. And it went... <laughs> Yeah, that was all, that was already in the second half when he was trying to make up for make that. up for, and he also had the handball. I mean, that could have that's a fifty fifty that could have been in. But what I'm what I'm getting at is like, even even the neutrals, everyone expects, everyone is expecting not just Brazil but like the traditional names to prance to the semifinals. Like they just they just like part the Red Sea for me, everyone. This is I'm a football I'm a footballing traditional powerhouse. Well, Please lay down. By, uh, there's a lot of people who 
let's face it, thank God they are watching it every four years. They ought to. But there's a lot of people who only watch it every four years or watch it every May during the FA Cup final or the Champions League final or the semifinals or whatever, or the Classicos, what have you. And they don't know these names. They only know the names of the countries. Right, and they know, oh, these guys got four stars. This guy's got three stars. They remember seeing them in 94. They remember seeing them in 98. There, in 2002, and there's an expression in in, uh, in Portuguese that's been floating around uh, soccer for a while now. Uh, I'll say it in Portuguese. I'll translate. No tem mais bobo em futebol. There's no more dummies in soccer. Meaning, in the 50s and the 60s, and even in the 70s, you go to the World Cup and you're gonna get you're gonna get a Lithuania or somebody that's and they're not prepared, and they got in because like. Whatever they, you know, they got in somehow, or there was like an Asian team that got in that was before Asia really de- flourished in, in in soccer, and they just because somebody's got to go, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, they draw they draw straws to see who was going, and you know there'd be those seven one, eight one, nine zero games, that that's gone. Yeah. If you were one of the thirty two teams at the World Cup, you're bringing pain. You made it. You bring in pain. Even Honduras, Honduras maybe was the worst performing team at this World Cup. They didn't. <laughs> They, they, they may have played poorly, but they hurt people on the way. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they were the murder, murder capital of the world for a reason. I mean, it, for so, capita, at least. So, I think if Brazil overcomes mental hurdles, I think they will push aside their little brother in Colombia and, and move on. If they get into those lulls where everyone's trying to do everything themselves and you start to see, like, you know, Louise just bombing the ball forward, playing direct, direct football, you know, English football – where they have like it looks like they have no answers, then you, you can put yourself in a situation like they did against Chile, where Chile w- was one crossbar away from from sending Brazil home. You know, was Chile the better team on the day? No, I don't think so. But it doesn't need to be the better team if you have one better chance, and that can happen against Colombia. Absolutely, yeah, can happen against Colombia. It was about that much, uh, about a centimeter of a difference. It's, it can ha- it could happen. Incredible. It could happen. Well, it could happen. Could happen to Belgium. We'll get there. It's incredible. So, who uh, starting off on Saturday, Argentina and Belgium. Uh, who cares? This is going to be a fun <laughs> game. I, you know, Argentina. I just, I, I, I'm I, 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 my, my Americanism is, is just going to kick in right here. Uh, Argentina, just, just, just blow the Belgians out of the water. You're bitter from that? I'm not bitter from it. I just... You I don't want them out? I mean, some people say, well, I want them to win the whole thing. I want to at least lose to the champion. What will like, everybody in Brooklyn do, though? Oh, well, they'll just put their Dortmund kits back on. <laughs> no, that's actually too. That's too mainstream now. I it, think it's gonna. If, I think it's gonna be an awesome game for Belgium. I think the Be- you know the, you know I, I mean the, in reality in, you know when I put a, when I take my uh, when, I, when I take my Uncle Sam hat off. Yeah. I think the I think uh, the Belgians could beat the Argentines. I think Defense so. Defense is, is Swiss cheese. Argentinas. Yeah. And Argent. I mean. How many times can they rely like, on I Messi like this, I doing like this? this? Young guy, Akubi, Akubi, whatever his name is, Akubi, the striker in Belgium, the one that that scored that screamer a couple of games ago. Origi, Origi, Origi. I'm killing my. I'm killing he started my. against the U.S. They benched yes. Lukaku for him. Yes, yes. Nineteen years old, eighteen years old. <sighs> he made himself some money this summer. He's going. Somewhere. I think right. I, 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 I. Yes, he's 19, I don't know. His... 18, 19 years old. He, he's intense. But yeah, and they started. He's another. Gian, he's another guy. Co- a couple games Dude, ago too. Benteke, Lukaku, Origi. These three guys that look like all three of them are going to be pushing each other to be a better and better to take that number one spot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's unfortunate that Benteke is hurt for them because that guy. I think he would have been their number one personally. Yeah. Well, he was going into it. That's why it was such a big deal. Who was going to fill in? Janozai started. He played great, supplying. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I, I, I'm excited to see this game. How do you feel about Leo, Leo Messi and his performances World Cup? I read a couple of reports. Uh, I don't know the validity of them, but it was pretty. It, it, ex, it explained a lot of the uh, the body language that you see on the. On what the they say? How he was kind of like a almost like a cult like figure in the club, within the locker room. The way they speak about him. Like Zabaleta is talking about him. He's the best in the world. There's oh, no, nobody better than this like that. Was, you know you know what the best in the world? You know what he did the last match? He ran three kilometers less than everybody else. That's what that's what it said. He 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 does and, more by doing less. Yeah, so. sure. 
That's that's the same thing as Uruguay coming to the coming to Suarez's defense. Okay, uh, we're the victim. Everyone's just trying to get us out of the World Cup because we were going to win it. Yeah. yeah, no, Messi is going through. I think Messi is going through a. Um, is in between he, doping people? No, no, no. He's been playing such high-level football for so long. He's won so much. And I know he hasn't won the World Cup. And I know that there's still national pride. But I think he might be going through a, some sort of dilemma in his head about how he feels about football. Like, does he have much left to prove? And uh, people keep saying he needs to win a World Cup to prove something. I think he might actually be mad that he doesn't need to do that. Because he, it's not... 1986, Maradona did it with cheating and carrying his team. Uh, he did carry his team. He was amazing. But he did cheat on the way. I mean, let's let's not take that. Let's have, let's put that in context. Um, people want Messi, the Messi, to do that to, to win it by any means. They want him to carry the team because, frankly, I don't think the rest of this team is good enough. I, yeah, I, no, I think the they Aguero, have an easy. Aguero, I think they have an easy road with Aguero out. Also, they have Di Maria and. It's not that they're not good. It's not that the Together. players. They're yes, exactly. Together. There's something wrong in that squad. And I, maybe Messi is the problem. They're trying to force him to, to be the guy that when, does it. When the opportunities come, he looks amazing, right? The opening that ball up to Di Maria, he drew the defense out. It was That's exactly what you would see all the time for Messi, right? But it's not... It took, I don't know, 115 minutes or whatever it took for that to happen. It wasn't... It's not... No one's falling for it anymore. <laughs> They're like, no, you have to work a little bit harder. Not that, you, not that you don't work hard enough already, but we're on to you. <laughs> we, we've seen YouTube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's like 700 videos of you do, you know, just keeping the ball on your left foot and never losing it. I think Belgium's going on to the semifinals. You think so? It blows yeah. my bracket. My only chance of winning my brackets is Brazil Argentina final and Brazil winning it, and then I win all the money. <laughs> it's mine. The money, the money, the money. I win the money. Um, <laughs> so the last I don't know. Game I, I don't know. I really that one. I can't even. I, a it's a push. You. It's a push. I don't know. You're not putting any money on it. No. If you ever could. Okay. Uh, I would put money on Netherlands for the late game <laughs> against Costa Rica. I know Costa Rica is the, the Cinderella story of this tournament. Absolutely not. Me- the Netherlands were six minutes away in a dive from being eliminated from this tournament against Mexico. A very, very, very good Mexico team. Costa Rica's beat up on quite a few teams. And don't and no, let's not sleep on Greece. Greece also had a man up for 60 minutes and Costa Rica held out. And Greece has a great defense. They they that's how they got where they got. On a negative two goal differential, Greece got into the got in they back their way in. in. But they got in they because they backed their way in. They like backed they, I, they I backed like, their way in like, because they didn't <laughs> allow goals. They let Colombia beat them up. In Greek fashion. They let Colombia beat them up, and after that, nobody else really, really beat them up. Okay, yeah, they got a lucky penalty against Ivory Coast. Hey, it happens. I think this Costa Rica team is going to con calf the shit out of the Dutch. I don't know. I think it's going to be a, a Belgium and Dutch semifinal. I'll tell you what, Navas, the goalie for Costa Rica, is, is I'm not going to say he's good, as good as Guillermo Ochoa for Mexico. But he's a damn good goalie. Damn good goalie. If it wasn't for him, for, it wasn't for him and the Costa Rican guys going all five shots in <laughs> uh, on the penalties, you know, we would be maybe looking at Greece Dutch, and the Dutch. Yeah. I, I, I don't think – I think this Dutch team is very good. I think they've got, again, another ton of talent. But I think they also are too – they're too counterattacking. And now Costa Rica is a counterattacking team. And when, when that happens, I'm not sure the Dutch know how to react very well against another team that likes to set up a little bit more direct. LVG knows. He can adjust. Yeah. You know what he did? He pretends that his adjustments after the fact were the reason why they won. I'm just saying. It's go- I think it's going to be Belgium Netherlands in the semis. Is it? There's definitely some love lost there, right? Th- those two countries don't get along, do they? Oh, no. That's going to be great. That's what I'm saying. I hope it's going to be that for the semis. It's going to be awesome. I want to see CONCACAF go farther. I, I mean, I've, I've, told, I've told some of my friends, I'm like, you know, USA's out. I wanted USA to, to go as far as they can. I wanted them to win uh, this who, thing, right? Everybody did. Um, obviously, you know, my blood, my family, 
I want the Brazilians to win. If the Brazilians can't win it, Costa Rica. I want Costa Rica, baby. Keep it in North America. Vida, what is it? What is it? Vida loca? Le, los ticos. Live, live in the Vida loca. Live in the Vida loca. Yeah. <laughs> Come on! Live in the Vida All right, let's talk Belgium USA a little bit, though. Let's talk Belgium and USA. We don't let's just glance over the USA match. I know it's. I know the wounds are still a little fresh. It was a. Uh, oh, that sitter! That's a heartbreaker. You know, even Landon Donovan came out and said, "That's the guy you want taking that shot." Wondolowski has made a living slamming in those poaching. goals. Poaching. Nine out of ten times. I mean, a Jay who writes for us also. He's like, Wando makes that ninety nine out of a hundred. It's not even nine out of ten. He makes it ninety nine out of a hundred. He, it's, it sucks. It happened. It came off his foot. Mm. But you know what? Uh, you know, you live by, you know, you, you set up and, t- wow. You set up a tactically to only create a few chances. You die tactically by only creating a few chances. That's the problem. That ultimately the problem was we played with three defensive midfielders and, we we played counterattacking football, but we were awful in transition. We were we gave up the ball sloppily in midfield. Yeah, at there the end of no at movement. the end of ninety minutes, it said the possession was fifty fifty. But I'm going to tell you that our possession was mostly in our third, sitting on the ball, and then passing it into midfield and losing it. And the reason why they got thirty something shots is because we gave up the ball poorly, and our defense couldn't have to scramble. Then it wasn't good enough. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't. Tactically, what I would have loved to have seen is something a little bit more attacking. Did we have the talent to do that? Maybe not. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe Klinsman's like, this is all we got. This is what we're going to do. Josie was my big. I, you know, I put a lot of faith in Josie being my guy up there. It completely changed my game plan. Now I got Dempsey up there. Dempsey doesn't play well as a lone striker. He plays much better as a link up guy, as an off striker. Bradley needs multiple options. He, might, he plays much better when he's got a lot of guys in front of him. So he's either better playing a little bit further back, or if he's going to play in the attacking role, he needs two strikers to look at, not one. And that's the position that we were in, and that's what we were facing. I have no sympathy for the... I don't... Excuse me, not sympathy. I have very little praise for the Belgian team, because if you have that many chances and you don't beat a team by four or or four or five goals, you deserve to lose. You know, like you deserve to get that that Wando goal. That Wando goal going in is punishment for a team that squanders opportunities. That last fifteen minutes, that U.S. push, that was incredible. I mean, that was like that was like. uh, I knew that we threw the kitchen sink at them. That was almost like a that was like a miracle on ice kind of thing. I know that we were throwing the kitchen sink at them, but why couldn't we play with that kind of urgency more? You know, or something closer to that. And, and did you notice when there was more guys, Bradley looked the most comfortable out of the entire World Cup when it was all on the line. And But now he had people moving and running in front of him. And look at how calm and cool he was on the ball with that Julian he? Green goal. I mean, that's what we wanted to see. That's what we expected from Bradley. But instead, we got this, like, guy that doesn't know if he's an attacking midfielder or a holding midfielder. And he's, he's kind of like... limbo. And, he's, and he ran his ass off. He's got the... He's, the stats say it. He ran more than anybody else in the World Cup. But it just, it wasn't right. It just wasn't right. And I know maybe it was the situation and the predicament and Josie and, and, you know, maybe Klinsman isn't a tactician. Maybe that's the bottom line. Maybe he's a good, he's a big idea, man. He's, like, he's, got, he's really good at big ideas, but he's not really good at in-the-moment decisions. Maybe that's what it is. It remains to be seen. I don't know. I think that his theories on uh, what we're going to move on to, uh, the system, he's more of a system man. That's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Big idea, big picture guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not that I'm saying he can't get his hands dirty, but I, obviously he can. He's he's doing it. He did it with Germany. He's doing it with the United States. But but I think he's better suited uh, sitting on top of a system and and dictating ideas and themes. Injuries killed him though. What the the the, jolt, the Altidore thing kind of crippled him. Imagine we had Fabian Johnson didn't get hurt and we brought Yedlin in in the midfield for Zuzi instead. Now we got that pace. Fabian Johnson was incredible the way he was. Minus, the, I mean, he blew his hamstring in the, in the first half. That, 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 that. <laughs> I mean, the what ifs, the what ifs. You go, you go nuts. I've been, I've been going nuts with this. And, you know, I, I tried to be really rational. I wrote a little uh, post-mortem on the match, and I tried to be as rational as I could. But I, I'm just, I'm, I'm riddled with contradiction. 
riddled. I, I like I feel positive. I feel good, but I feel like ah, the, the shitty. What the f- you know like. But you know what you know what's a good thing to look at. I mean, you see pictures of the crowds that were watching the games and the viewership. I mean, you see pictures of Iowa, Iowa City, and like yeah, uh, in the in, in cities in the Midwest. Kansas City crowds, uh, every Louis city, crowd, everywhere was had it. Chicago, St. Louis, Orlando, New York, San Francisco, L.A. Every across everywhere. the United States, everywhere I except mean, for Cape Cod. I gotta say, they were not having it. You were in you were in Cape Cod. I was in Cape Cod during the. They're first like turn off the goddamn soccer. They were like what? The Sox games on in like two hours. We gotta watch the pregame. <laughs> I'm like what? Um, uh, but yeah, uh, the U.S. Belgian game averaged 16.5 million viewers on ESPN, 5.1 million on Univision. That's pretty intense. That's 21 million, right? 21. How many? Million. Oh, wait, that's and 21 the, million. The, what's Nielsen? Mark, that's Nielsen. The, that's not even like that. Doesn't even. That's not like a head count. That's not no, a real no, number. That's in the Nielsen universe, right? So you think about. I was at a bar. That's out of the rating. So the rating, which is huge. These are these are these are huge. Just. For the future, I mean, I'm talking like the way it goes when they're picking up. Well, do we want to broadcast this instead of, uh, you know, golf? You know, tennis? Wimbledon is on. Yeah, do we want to do this or this? I mean, in the New York market, a 15 out of 100, that's an insane rating. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. On a Thursday. New no, Haven, no, was a Hartford, Tuesday. New Haven, Tuesday. 13. Washington, 12.8. Orlando, 10. San Diego, 11. Columbus, 10.8. Norfolk, Virginia, 10.8. There was, there was like one and a half million people not working, streaming it on their computers. <laughs> the highest rated market for have been Washington, New York, San Francisco, and L.A. Yep. Uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, and that, like, it's here to stay. It doesn't count, it doesn't even count, it doesn't count Soldier Field had, I don't know how many thousands of people. Yeah, the public uh, view zones, the bars. Every single every bar. bar. Think about all the bars. I was at a bar that had... I don't. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not good at like looking at a space and telling you how many people were there. But I'll tell you that there was everyone standing around because we ran out of chairs. Yeah, so that was good indicator. It was like St. Patrick's Day everywhere. Exactly. It so, was great. It was great. That's good. I mean, that's you can't you can't complain about that. It's getting bigger every year. Yep. Hopefully, it translates. Not every four years, the standard deviation gets shorter, right? <laughs> um. So. Best World Cup of your uh, of your existence so far? So far, yeah. I think that also has a lot to do with the uh, fact that it's on during our prime time. That is a big part of it. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not, I, I, I literally, I think I missed one game, two games maybe, at the most. I've seen, I've seen probably at least 15 minutes of every single game, um, and maybe after the fact. I maybe missed I maybe missed four games, five games in total, it, like completely live, and then I ended up like watching some of it later or catching the highlights. But yeah, it helps. It absolutely helps. Yeah, it's been, it's it's been a very like you said in the beginning, it's been an exciting three weeks. I'm almost sad that there's only one and a half weeks left. But you know what? Bite your tongue. It's oh, not over yet. The way she goes. There's still several matches to go. Um, let's talk about some individual efforts. Let, you want to go from you want to go from worst to best, or you want to go from uh, best to worst? Go to worst. Worst. Who has been biggest flop, biggest disappointment for you this tournament? Oh. On an individual, on an individual basis. I can't. I know you can't blame him because he was injured, but Ronaldo, I think, was the biggest disappointment. Uh yes. I, you know, it's a good. I wasn't even thinking. I wasn't even going there. I, but I guess compared to what the going the, into it, the expectation is, you know, I would have taken this lot time over him. Yeah, but he couldn't I, even no, be there. In hindsight, in hindsight, in hindsight, I would have preferred Sweden to have beaten Portugal. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. I mean. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see um, to me, just name an English player. Yeah. Any yeah. English player. Yeah. No, at, no. St- Steven Gerrard, captaining England, looked like he did not belong on that field. Looked like he was outclassed, outmuscled, outhustled. Did not belong on that field. I do not know what Roy Hodgson has going on in his head. I know that the Liverpool thing, you know, I know Liverpool's been blowing up the Premier League. Their system is incredible. You want to put some of those Premier, those Liverpool guys that play together yeah, on the they field. They still choked. I think he still's got that on them. Well, would, regardless, okay, regardless. I mean, I guess, of course, he did choke. Nice slip. I enjoyed it. I think he's gonna haunt him. Crystal Palace is a 
is a mean team to play. I know. He shattered like crystal. <laughs> um, but but uh, you're the manager of, of England. There's nobody. I mean, Lalana, Wilshire. Uh, throw, Lampard had a better season than him. Lampard is still better than him. You know, maybe Lampard can't go the whole match. Uh, but Gerard didn't seem like he had... You know what Gerard was looking like? Gerard looked like he was do something from the other team. Like, he lo- it literally felt like he was walking around almost as if, um, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a football legend. You know, you need to give me respect. You know, when I slide tackle, I don't get yellow cards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, 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 there, was this, there was this aura about him that just... I'm here now. It was very arrogant, I felt. And it didn't seem like he'd have the heart behind it. And I think part of that... Uh, I'm not, I don't think it's a personal... I don't actually think it's an individual thing. I think the media destroys the English team. Their media destroys their team. Every single tournament, every single chance they get, they get smashed and bashed. They get way too much more pressure. I mean, England is what Brazil could be. <laughs> I mean, you know, the media keeps bashing the team so much. There's no praise ever. It's just, it's just negative. Yeah. So I mean, if there was one guy, if there's one guy, I would say Gerard. Uh, you know, another disappointment, Suarez, of course. Suarez. I mean, like, that, that was just, can you not expect? I mean, you, you expect comical. it's comical. That was but, next level. He, but if you think about what he, what he did to his team, what he, how valuable Nation. he is to his team, Nation. Was na- how valuable he is to them, and what he did. It's stupid. Liverpool. He might not even be playing next year there. Who's going to make more money playing at Barcelona? Because yeah. money talks, bro. Money talks. <sighs> true, true, true. All right, so what was? What do you think was the most thrilling game? Thrilling game? So far. To date. Oh, God. It's hard to... It's hard... Uh, it's, it's very... Bi- it's biased. It's very hard to say... The, the games that are thrilling to me... I mean, watching the United States play... I have, like, I have, it, it sucks. When I watch Brazil play, it's always, the expectation is so high. I am always, I am nine times out of ten left disappointed. Even when they win, I feel like they could have done better, they could have done more, they could have, they, they, they barely met what I was expecting. You know, when they beat Cameroon 4-1, I'm like, okay, that's fine, that's good, it should have been 4-0, you know? Mm. <laughs> um, so, the bar is so high. So, my emotionally, emotionally, everything is thrilling because it, it's never reaching that expectation, so it's like, oh my god, it's like I'm getting crushed constantly. When I watch the United States, my expectation isn't as high, but the joy that I get out of watching them play is significantly higher than watching Brazil play. Everybody because likes rooting for the underdog. It's not just the underdog. There's something. I, there's something more about. There's something more. I think I'm more American than than I am Brazilian. You know they what I mean? Play with like, a lot of heart. The, there's the heart factor, and I get and it, it and it, you know. Set the bar low, you know, and shoot high. So it's so when they do do those amazing things, when they do score ball? those, <laughs> if you can dodge a wrench, you know when it's, you, expect nothing. You it's, show up. It's, it's, it's a Taoist. <laughs> it's very it's Taoist the Taoist mentality. No, but it's I don't. It's not that I don't expect nothing from them. It's it's I, it's that anything short of Brazil winning the World Cup is going to be a disappointment. Of course, okay? the United States making the semifinals, I would be doing backflips in my living room. You know, you know, so it's hard. Now you ask me, what's the most thrilling game? I can't take those two teams out of the equation. I can't. They're well, like so ingrained. Well, I'm, I'll make the. I'll, tr- I'll, I'll, I'll choose for you. Okay. The Brazil Chile game. Oh God, I, w- I lost years off my life. I, <laughs> I don't have. I mean, look at this. And the last 15 minutes of the U.S. Belgium game. Dude, when Green scored that goal, that was insane. When Green scored that goal. Uh, I, I, I had was gonna come I had a religious experience, or the closest thing to a religious experience I've ever had. A guy from across the bar stood up and he looked back at the, you know, he was a little bit further closer to the TV than I was, and he stood up and he looked back, and I was standing up and he looked at me and he pointed and he's like, "I believe," and I just and I like the bar was kind of quiet because we were still kind of like in shock, and I just was like, "I believe that we will win," <laughs> and then the whole <laughs> fucking bar erupted, <laughs> and I was like. This, did that just happen? <laughs> like, did that just happen? It was like I was above myself, looking down on myself. <laughs> uh, that those last fifteen minutes, yeah. I really did believe we were going to be able to pull it off. At yeah, least get, at least go insane. to penalties. 
I really thought it was going to happen. And that, that set piece, well, we're still talking about USA Belgium. That set piece, that rehearsed set piece that Dempsey almost got in. Oh, oh my God. If that had got in, it would have been the greatest set piece ever. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Rehearsed set piece. You know, I the, think we would have been talking about how great of a tactician he was. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's all, hindsight, hindsight, hindsight. <laughs> We we're just gonna we're gonna let them punch us in the face for an hour and a half, <laughs> and then we're gonna beat them in the end. Who's been the best player of the tournament so far? Um, I mean it's hard it's hard to pull away from, you know, best player or most important player to their team. I mean, James Rodriguez has been the best player of the tournament. Yeah, he was also my best new starlet. You know, I don't really consider him a starlet. He made he was paid Monaco paid forty million euros for him. It's not he's not a nobody. Yeah, he, he, I'm not saying that he doesn't have a large bank account and he, and he isn't recognized in Europe, but I'm talking about internationally. There are a lot of people who had no idea who Yama because Monaco was. hasn't really made the name for themselves. Exactly. Yet. I, I mean, people who follow football know Monaco spends a lot of money on. They're like the they they man city him. Right, you're gonna know like the the Zenit and and Shakhtar spend a lot of money on Brazilians, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, that's that's a, he could be a starlet. Um, honestly, I think there's the the big names have been playing very well. Aaron Robin has been super critical to the Dutch. Neymar has been super critical for Brazil. How about Schneider? West- Sh- well, Schneider. Well, Schneider in the last game definitely. West- for sure. Wesley Snipes. He he he. Oh, he was big in that last game. Uh, Leo Leo Messi. Leo, where would Argentina be without Leo Messi? He's carrying that team. No, yeah, that wouldn't be there. Uh, Joel Campbell, I think, is the starlet for me. For, for me, uh, is the absolutely. starlet. Uh, Joel Campbell, uh, I mean, him and Novice, their goalie has been incredible. Uh, Joel Campbell. Is he a gunner? Yes, he is. I think they have another striker now. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> everyone, he, uh, you know, Wenger's been on French TV doing World Cup stuff, and he's like, oh, he will, yes, yes, it's, he will be at, uh, <laughs> he will be at Sipping L- his wine. London Colony. It's a little bit uh, interesting. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, like. that, that's uh, it's pretty. It's exciting. Uh, there's always a couple of people pop up. Who do you think is going to be the most? Well, you know, Ochoa has been was before the Mexico knock, got knocked out too. Not th- I. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a surprise, so to speak. That he is a surprise because no one thought he had anything left, and it sh- he almost showed that he's even better than he ever was. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of uh, interesting. Yeah, that, he, he made some unbelievable saves. Incredible. Oh, I, you know, there's another name I forgot. I, there's um, there's so many guys. Uh, Chile's uh, Charles uh, Adeguiz. Yes. He's been... He I think he is going to make a big contract. He's playing in Brazil right now for Inter. I think he's going to... I think he's going to be one of the guys that you're going to see coming to Europe with a big money deal at the end of this at the end of this transfer Spain, window. Spain, something like that. Sp- yeah, Spain would be a perfect place for him because he speaks Spanish. And <laughs> there's already a lot of Chileans there. Yes. So, what do you think? Uh, what do you think this means for the future of football in the U.S.? You know, every year you see. I don't think uh, you know Major League Soccer doesn't do well TV wise. I'm not. I don't think that we're going to see a huge TV improvement. For them, I don't think the Major League Soccer is the only football soccer venue. Excuse me, in the United States either. There's other teams. There's other local teams. There's NASL. There's USL. There's there's other opportunities. I think attendance wise, we will see an uptick at games. Live attendance. Live attendance. We'll see an uptick. Season ticket sales through the end of this season, right? And then next year, it'll still be up, but not as much. Then the next season, up. But not as much, and then like the third year out of the World Cup, it almost. This is the we hope that the, the I think that I think the true measurement is three years after the World Cup if the net gain is still there. As long as still we're still, be higher than as long as we're before. higher than before the World Cup after three years, we're okay. And then the World Cup comes and then we boost. So we're taking like little. It's like um, it's like economic the economic cycle, right? The stock market goes up, comes down a little bit, but it never comes below. You know, it should never come back below. Where you were, and it goes back up, and you watch like you watch those trends from the '30s up. You know, there's inflation, all that crap. But same thing. Hopefully, hopefully we're seeing uh, an upswing. I think with football, American football, having so many injury head issues uh, being brought to the forefront, people being concerned, so many football players dying and having you know suicides and a lot of awful things. Early you watch, you watch the you watch the real sports with the guys that are just suffering. 
I think there's a lot of parents that are going to be turned off from American football. I'm not saying that it's going to be wiped off the face of the planet, but I think there's going to be a down downswing. I think we've already seen baseball is starting to I, – I, there's still a lot of money in baseball, but I, I believe that th- there are certain markets that are carrying it and other markets are dying. Steroids are killing it. Well, steroids I think killed – probably was maybe – Looking back from, you know, maybe 20 years from now, we're going to say steroids was the, the nail in the coffin maybe for, for making it drop out of the top one, two in America. Uh, I think the NBA, I think if the NBA played basketball like they do in the playoffs all year, they'd be fine. But I don't think they, they're going to start doing that anytime soon. So I, the NBA is up for grabs. I think you could take the NBA. Yeah. Uh, it's just I, the, I season, really the, seasons, the seasons don't match up too well. So maybe that's the NBA is fine. Same thing with hockey. They don't match up. There's some overlap, but not a lot. So we'll see. I mean, is there room for everybody? In the summertime, it's just baseball. Yeah. There's room. There's definitely room. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, of course, there's, there's some spring There's some spring and schedule. fall. A more regular schedule. I think, I mean, people have been preaching. This is, this is, this is people have been preaching this. Give me a fixed schedule. A Friday you, when you night, look at Saturday the, When you look game. at Major League Soccer table right now, there is, a, there is maybe some teams have three or four games in hand. Because of the schedule. It has nothing to do with rainouts or snow cousin, or anything. I got a cousin coming from Scotland. I wanted to go bring him to a Red Bulls game. They're playing one away game at the beginning. He's going to be here for 10 days the first day or the day before he gets here. And they're not playing in Harrison for 15 days after that. I mean, that happens in the Premier League, too. Teams go, you know, other in other leagues, teams do go on road trips. Yeah, but it's... it's but you know, Saturday, 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 Saturday. It's a Tuesday and a Wednesday, and a, you know what I mean. They're I hate the days. I hate the randomness. There's some Friday games. There's a Thursday game. There's just okay. There's a make up this game. Like there's lottery balls to pick. The, Keep it the games simple, the stupid. Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it simple, stupid. All right. Yeah. Well, that's it for us tonight. We're gonna uh, do another one before uh, before the end of the. Uh, Le Coupe de Mont. Yeah, we'll probably do. Hopefully, maybe you know. Let's see. Schedules. Scheduling has been a little tough. Hopefully, we do one after the quarters. Preview the semis. After the semis, preview the final, we'll be and here. then we'll do uh, do the grand finale, where either we're crying or cheering. We'll be here. Or we'll, we, one of us might have slit each other's throats by then because maybe we're playing each other in the finals. Wait, no, no that can't happen. Semifinals. Semifinals. Yeah. Maybe we'll make it. You know what would really suck? What? We both get knocked out this round. Yeah. <laughs> France and Columbia. Columbia, France. <laughs> we'll both be in opposite ends of the room crying. The no, well, then we can, then we can, then we can <laughs> watch that game. Together. We can watch the semifinals in, in peace. We won't. Hope they both <laughs> we, lose. We can actually watch it together. <laughs> See who gets too far. Um, All right, well, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Soccer Yank Dave. Uh, I am at Soccer Yank Dan. Also, uh, our website has at Soccer Yanks. That's you know you're gonna get all the posts and the podcast there. It's, there's not much, uh, there's not too much activity there, but you're gonna get all the info. And SoccerYanks.com. Yeah, that that one. Uh, also, you know uh, if you if you've been listening for us through us, uh, we we got a project going with uh, the guys over at ATP uh, across the pond. They uh, they with us have put together Eyes on Rio. We've been um, Teaming up with them and doing a lot of a lot of World Cup stuff. I mean, essentially, this is kind of like an Eyes on Rio, but a very exclusive, high level one on one, like heavy, <laughs> a light heavy, a version. light heavy Eyes on Rio. Um, it's like a Guinness. It's like a Guinness foamy top, but but a meaty body. Yeah, liquid bread. <laughs> Feed a whole family. Exactly. Uh, so you know, check out that stuff. We got some. We had some some really good banter going on. We did some. Uh, some good previews. And there's tons of ways to find us. Just go to SoccerGangs.com. Yeah. And uh, happy, uh, happy World Cup watching. We'll see you soon. Thank you for listening.